So here is my Enduro Stealth Bomber bike that I built a few years ago. And I've definitely put a lot of miles on this thing. It's a lot of fun, really reliable, and I got a lot of great rides out of it. But now it has a flat. And this actually never happened to me before in all the few years that I've been riding. But this is really the issue with hub motors. You know, they're pretty convenient in terms of uh, saving space. You don't really have to mount a clunky motor somewhere in the frame and then run a chain and do all this kind of stuff. You just place the motor directly in the wheel and you have all the space for batteries and everything else. It really simplifies the system. And also they're quiet, they're reliable, and they're pretty cheap, but they do come with some drawbacks. And in particular, one downside is that if you have a flat, you gotta pull the whole thing out. So on this motor, the phase wires are coming out of the axle right there. And then they're running along the swing arm. And then they're going up into the body of the bike. And then they're running along the bottom on the inside all the way through here and then coming out right there and then mounting to the controller. Now I also have the battery in there. I have to take the battery out of the bike just to change the back wheel. And that's one reason why hub motors are not convenient. I think ultimately the systems in the bike should be modular and they should each serve a purpose. The motor should do its motor thing. The wheel should be a wheel. So like on a bike like this, uh, uh, it's just a standard motorcycle. It's very easy to change the wheel. You just take the chain off, remove the wheel, and it has nothing to do with the motor or the phase wires or anything like that. But on this bike, I'm gonna have to deal with all this. So actually what I wanna do is at least get to a point where if I get a flat again, I don't have to go through this entire process. Because what I wanna do is cut the phase wires right here, just snip them. That way I can remove the wheel. And then what I'll do is take one of these phase wire sort of like connection blocks and then mount that underneath right over here. So then the phase wires from the motor side can be attached here and then the phase wires from the controller side can be attached on this side. And if I ever get a flat again, all I need to do is disconnect it here and I don't have to go through this whole process of removing the battery from the bike, which is a real pain. Here's the battery inside the frame. It's propped up by some padding on the bottom and some aluminum sheet that's kind of like secured around it. It doesn't actually have an aluminum case, but it has aluminum sheet all around it as if it's a case. And then it's held down by these Velcro straps, which are running underneath the controller through the frame. So it's very secure. I've never had issues with it. So now I've disconnected the battery. And if I undo those straps, the battery would be able to be removed, but the issue with this thing is that this battery is pretty heavy and as you can see, it's on a pretty steep angle in the bike and it doesn't have a whole lot of room to move forward up here. So it's really difficult to remove. Um, all of that weight is just keeping it down towards the back. So it, it takes a lot of, I've removed it before without any help, but um, it's, it's kind of sketchy. So what I found works is if I take the rear wheel and elevate it where this battery is actually level with the ground. And that way I could just slide it forward and it becomes a lot easier. But then the issue is that I have to kind of balance this bike with this wheel off the ground. So now I have the battery removed and the phase wires run just underneath this padding where the battery sits. So if I take this out, there's some padding back here. So this, here are the phase wires just coming out of the uh, back of the frame. And they're just running all the way down to the controller down here. Okay, so now that I have the battery out of the bike, it's time to cut this phase wire cable. So I don't really have a good set of tools for doing this, but what I wanna do is just cut this outer uh, sheath first and then see what I'm working the, with underneath. 
So as you can see, the balance wires are here and they're color coded, which is good because I don't have to label them and worry about connecting them incorrectly. Uh, and here is the harness for the hall sensor wires. So I would also need to account for this if I'm gonna make this removable. So let's see what we're working with underneath there. Oh, that's right, there are two hall sensors. So one of them I don't even really need. All right, well, let's go for it. And these will be the phase wires. Huh, okay. Oh, these things are tough. All right, so now that I have the phase harness for the motor disconnected, I can just pull this side out from here. It just comes out that way. And that's gonna be the controller side of the harness. So on the controller side of the harness, I have this basically here, I'm just gonna crimp on some terminals for the phase wires. That's pretty straightforward. But then this motor has two hall sensors and uh, I'm not using one of them. I only really need one hall sensor. So now that I have this disconnected, I can basically just pull this hall sensor out. So that's the, uh, the spare hall sensor harness, which I don't need. This is the one that I'll be using. So what I'll do is just basically crimp on a uh, connector like this on this side, but I'm gonna use a waterproof connector. This one has six terminals and it kind of has a flat orientation as opposed to the other side, which is kind of a square one. So this will be better for the bottom of the bike because I can basically sort of mounted, it'll take up less space. So all we need to do is to crimp these terminals on after placing one of these on the wire and uh, we should be good to go. So that's the hall sensor dongle wire completed. Next we have the motor side of the phase wire cable. These are the hall sensor lines. And some of these are, there are two hall sensors in this motor. What I need to do is cut this up a little bit so I have a little bit more room to work with. Then I'll trim all of the wires that correspond to these colors. And then the ones that are left, I'll put into a connector. I just noticed I have, there are two silver lines. I don't know which is for which, but I guess it, I can use either one, right? Both go to the same motor temperature sensor or maybe to two different motor temperature sensors, but they'll be, they'll be sensing the same temperature. Well, the temperature sensor does not need a power source, so it really doesn't matter which one I use. Okay, so all of these are the hall sensor, for the hall sensor that I'm going to use. And all of these are for the hall sensor that I'm not going to use. Well, my phone died, but I managed to crimp the terminals on each of the hall lines, and then that connects with the other side of this thing, just like that. Okay, so next is time to crimp the terminals on the end of the phase wires. And to do that, I have this. This is a uh, hydraulic crimper. This is definitely a little bit more expensive, but uh, it is solid. It really gets the job done. And these dies basically, 
because the hydraulic part you can really get anywhere. Uh, you get a good hydraulic press to do this, but it's really the dies that you pay for, for them to be more accurate. So the dies here are really well cut and they're exactly the right size that you need. So uh, I was doing some crimping with four gauge wire, so I'm gonna have to swap this out for eight gauge wire. All right, so let's get these wires crimped. All right, so that gives you a nice solid crimp and test a little bit, see if we can pull it apart, not a chance. So this one is good. It's time to do the rest. All right, so there you have all the terminals crimped. Uh, nice and solid. Uh, we'll just get some heat shrink on these and then we'll be good to go. And there's the entire phase wire set of cables. So now I just have to do the same thing on the motor side. I have to add the terminal lugs to the phase wires here. All right, and there you go. Now the motor side is done as well. So here I have the swing arm removed from the bike and what I wanna do is attach this phase wire junction box right here on the swing arm. So what I think I'm gonna do is mount them, mount this to this piece of steel, then cut the holes and place the threaded screws through this steel and then you know cut this to the right size and weld this piece to here. Okay, so now I have a little bracket piece like this, and this aligns on top of it like that. And what I wanna do is pass these bolts through, just like this. All right, and of course this will be mounted on the underside. So I definitely want everything to be flush here because this is gonna be attached to the underside of the frame. So I want this whole side to be completely flat and I'll have to grind these bolt heads down. And then I'll weld the entire thing to the bottom. So that's the plan. So here I have the bolts in place with a couple of nuts, just holding them in place. And the first thing I'll do is weld this head into place. All right, well, here it is. So managed to weld the screws through this side and I ground them down. Then the weld material that I added around here 
I ground down with a Dremel just to make it a little bit more uniform and take up less of a footprint. So these are in here, very secure, especially for the purpose. It's not really gonna be holding too much load. And this, so here I have, I drilled some countersinks just to accommodate these, um, these, these weld fillings. So this attaches nice and flush and I'll be able to weld this right onto the bottom of the swing arm. So here I have the swing arm ready to be welded to. I just cleaned up the paint over here. So this will go right over here. All right, there we go. Not the prettiest welds in the world, but this is definitely gonna stay in place. It's not really supporting any weight at all. So that's perfectly fine. Now this just drops in like that. And here's the swing arm after painting. It looks pretty good. I also painted the phase wire junction box, whatever you call this thing. Looks good. Now just throw this back on the bike and we're pretty much good to go on that front. All right, now for the fun part, changing the tire. This part sucks no matter what kind of motor you have. This is a tube tire, so we have these tire spoons, I suppose, and all we have to do is lift the tire off the rim and then we can pull the tube out uh, and then maybe we'll change the rim liner and we just have to put a new tube in. So the reason for the flat is that the valve stem completely ripped off of the tube. So I don't know why that was the case. Maybe the alignment was poor or when I inflated it, it was kind of like caught off to the side and shearing. It's, that was probably the reason. So, you know, when you install these, definitely have to make sure that the valve stem is properly seated and there isn't a lot of like sideways pulling or pushing force, you know, because otherwise it's constantly being sheared. And I was looking at the rim liner and noticed that it's pretty much, again, uh, you could see why that bowel stem was ripped because this rim liner has a lot of shear force this way. So uh, something just was not well positioned here and I'm gonna have to replace the rim liner as well, which I don't have. So I'm gonna have to order a new one and then replace the tire then. Here's the new liner, so we'll put this in place. Now that I have the liner in place, it's time to put in a new tube. All right, and now we have the tire changed. Now I've got the rear wheel back on the bike and I've got it up on a stand with the phase wire harness mocked up on my connector here. So um, it's coming out over here and it's a pretty good fit, I think. The only thing I didn't anticipate is that the offset of these wires makes it so that whichever phase wire is the furthest to the left here, it's gonna be a little short and the one that's over to the right is just a little bit long. So really I should have cut these a little bit staggered, but it would have been difficult to determine which one, you know, how much to cut them uh, to a staggered degree. But this still kind of works. I guess what I could do, I could maybe like shorten the green one or whichever I put over here and shorten this one a little bit less. Actually the middle one's fine.
Okay, so I've secured the phase wires with zip ties along the swing arm. And I gotta say, I think it's good. There's, we got good clearance right here. I think we're good. I don't think there's anything more to do over here. And here's the rear wheel with the phase wire harness attached to the swing arm with zip ties. All right, and here are the phase wires with the controller side of the wire put in place. So there's a controller. I don't have that end connected yet. But as far as this junction goes, I have the wires running right here. There's the motor side and the controller side is right there. And it's a nice little junction right underneath. So uh, this connector, of course, is, are the hall sensor wires. And that fits pretty well where I can just sort of snap these in. So those are snapped in place. I would just put the cover here. I didn't put the cover right now because I'm actually, so this is the way it would work. And I tested it before the wheel was turning. I didn't have any issues, but I'm not actually gonna be able to finish this video by putting everything together and putting the battery back in and then riding the bike because I have to redo the wiring inside the bike. I noticed there were some issues in there and actually when I initially first put this together, I didn't really do the best job with some of the wiring. I definitely um, have learned a little bit since and I wanna redo the wiring here. So this will be the end of the video for this little project. Uh, but as I mentioned, now I have a setup where if I get a flat, I can just disconnect the phase wires and the hall sensor right there and then easily remove the back wheel, which is actually what I'm about to do. So thanks a lot for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.